Hello, good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, good night. Now we are going to start with another session and we are going to make a review for yesterday's topic. Yesterday we were talking about uh, some important topics that we have. Good evening. Good evening. For this one, yesterday we were talking about the health problems vocabulary. We were talking about uh, health, some words, some vocabulary. Then we were talking about the uh, we were talking about mother verbs and some uses. So for now to uh, end the topic of the uh, mother verbs, we have just some ideas that we are going to end today. And, and yesterday, let me share the screen. This one. And this is the document that we were uh, using uh, yesterday for the topics. And something that you have to notice that I tend to send the information or the documents that we use in the sessions the fourth day of the week, that is the end of the, of the week. So tomorrow is the end of the fourth day, or I mean the first week. So tomorrow I will send you the document with the information that we are using and that we were using the dates before. So uh, to end the topic of the model verbs, we have that is something important to these model verbs is the pronunciation. And it says that the intonation is very important with this, um, this topic. And it says that um, we can make all the difference between sounding polite and rude. And this kind of things that is very important that we make some difference with the tone of voice that we use when we speak with people. So in this case, we can sound polite or we can sound rude. And it is very important to get it right if you want a stranger to do something for you. Uh, you need to get up and, uh, and down movement in your voice. But uh, this is something very important because we are going to talk about listening um, skills. So it is very important that we uh, know the difference between uh, different kinds of sounds because in Spanish we have that uh, intonation too. When we want to sound uh, polite or when we want to sound rude, or when we want to, to, to sound professional, we have different kind of voices or we have different kind of intonation. Para esto de los, de los modal verbs, dice que es bien importante la entonación de las palabras, la forma en la que hablamos. Y es importante, ¿por qué? Porque podemos sonar rudos, podemos sonar amables, podemos sonar profesionales, dependiendo de la forma en la que nosotros utilicemos la voz y las palabras o la entonación. So, we have uh, some things to do in the platform. So let me go to the, flat, the platform before, uh, before changing the topic, because we are going to talk about a very, very important topic that is the listening skills. You are learning uh, English, you are learning a single language and is um, a mixture of different things. And in this case, we have the four macro skills that is uh, listening, reading, writing, and also have the grammar. But in this case, uh, we are going to talk about the listening skills. En el tema que vamos a ver ahora, vamos a hablar de eh, la parte del oído, ¿verdad? La, la parte auditiva. And we are going to uh, talk about how to improve the listening skills. Vamos a eh, hablar de eh, cómo mejorar nuestra parte de la audición en inglés. So, but after, let's see, I'm in the platform and we have something to do there. So we are going to wait some seconds because it's changing. So let me see. We have after the.
we have a conversation that we have to listen and practice. So let me find it. We have here, let me see. Okay, we have here and it says, in this session, you will listen to vocabulary related to containers following this part of conversation between a pharmacist and a customer will take place. Model verbs for requests and suggestion are introduced. We are going to listen a conversation between two people talking about something about pharmacy or something about health. And we can hear also some model verbs. Then we have another one that is a, another conversation in which we can, or maybe it is a video, we can uh, find the uses of model verbs can call, make for request and suggestion. So we are going to listen to audios and see two videos uh, in which we are going to see some of the uses of the model verbs. So we are going to start with the first one that is a conversation. We have to uh, listen very carefully because it contains some information. So I'm going to share the, uh, the screen with the sound and then we are going to listen very carefully the conversation. I don't listen, teacher. Yes, it is because it don't have the volume up. I changed that, so don't worry. Let it start with the, the video. To begin, in the conversation we're about to listen to, we will introduce modal verbs for suggestions and requests. Please practice the conversation with a classmate or a friend, as it is important to repeat for better understanding. Listen and practice. Please. Could I have something for a cough? I think I'm getting a cold. Well, I suggest a box of these cough drops. Thank you. And what do you suggest for dry skin? Try some of this new lotion. It's very good. Okay. And one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest anything? He should try some of these multivitamins. They're excellent. Great. May I have three large bottles, please? A classmate or a friend, as it is important. Listen and practice. Okay, we have here the conversation. We are going to listen one more time and then we are going to practice the pronunciation of the sentences. So we have a conversation between two people in a pharmacy and it's called, what do you suggest? So we are talking about suggestions and we are talking about the model verbs to ask for that information. And we have a, some information that she needs to know about the medicine that is uh, that she wants to buy, uh, some symptoms or things like that. So we are going to listen again the conversation. Listen and practice. Hi, may I help you? Yes, please. Could I have something for a cough? I think I'm getting a cold. Well, I suggest a box of these cough drops. Thank you. And what do you suggest for dry skin? Try some of this new lotion. It's very good. Okay. And one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest anything? He should try some of these multivitamins. They're excellent. Great. May I have three large bottles, please? Okay. Now it's time to practice this conversation. I don't know if you have the access to the platform to search for this conversation, or I can put it in the, um, in the screen 
uh, for you to uh, read this sentence. Let me see. I will take the conversation and then I will uh, put the um, the screen again and you will have time to see the image of the conversation and then we are going to practice this uh, conversation in groups. Remember that we are learning something new. So we have to um, talk about or talk or use the voice to express some idea. So in this case, we are going to practice this conversation in groups. So let me put the, tell me. Hey, I have a question. Tell me. Uh, what is the meaning of dry skin? Piel seca. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I am doing this because I want to share the screen with the conversation to read again the sentence and uh, see if you if you have some question about the conversation and then we are going to go to practice. So let me see, there it is. Jean, okay. We have here the conversation. We have the phrase number one. Hi, may I help you? Number one, hi, may I help you? Uh, sentence number two, yes, please. Could I have something for a cough? Remember that we can say cough. That is the pronunciation, cough. I think I'm getting a cold. I think I'm getting a cold. Then, the next one, well, I suggest a box of these cough drops. I suggest a box of these cough drops, que son gotas para la tos. Then, thank you, and what do you suggest for dry skin? Thank you, and what do you suggest for dry skin? Try some of this new lotion, it's very good. Try some of this new lotion. It's very good. <clears throat> okay, and one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest anything? Okay, and one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest anything? He should try some of these multivitamins. They are excellent. He should try some of these multivitamins. They are excellent. Great, may I have three large bottles, please? Great, may I have three large bottles, please? If you can uh, take a screenshot or something like that for the conversation, it will be nice because we are going to divide this group into maybe two or three, um, little groups to practice the pronunciation of the sentence. So I will give you time to take the screenshot or a searching for the conversation in the platform. Then I'm going to divide the group for the practicing part. So you have time to do it, to take the screenshot or to go to the platform to search for the conversation. Okay, wait, uh, it changed the image for an schedule, and I don't know why. But I will put the screen again.
Tell me when you are ready for the practice. Ready, teacher. I'm okay. ready to teach. Okay. So let's prepare the rooms in which we are going to practice this conversation. So let me see. Let's see, how many groups? Okay, we have 25. Yes, we are going to create little rooms. So a message will appear in your screen. You have to accept the invitation and then you are going to a, a group where you can um, practice at the conversation and I am going to see each of the groups when you are practicing the conversation. So don't worry, all of you can participate. Uh, you can uh, repeat all the sentences and all of that. So you have to repeat, read and say the sentence of this conversation. So let's go. Let's move to the rooms. Okay, right now. Please, I guess you have to um, two users in this um, in this meeting or something like that because I see two a user with the same name and I don't know if what it's happening. Luis, are you there? Thank you. And what do you suggest for dry sky skin? Okay. And one and one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest anything? So is this part of the um, great, excellent. Great. great. May I have this this large bottle, please? Okay. Okay. Eh, Maritza y mi persona se gusta. Okay. Hi, may I help you? May I help you? El, el micrófono, Maritza. 
a human. <clears throat> um, moment, please. Relation. Um, uh, Mr. Well, yes. Will I have some time for a cook? I think I am have a cook. Well, I suggest a box of this cold drops. Thank you. Okay, you first. See. Okay. Uh, hi, may I help you? Yes, please. Could I have something for cough? I think I'm getting a cold. Well, I suggest a box of these cough drops. Thank you. And what do you suggest for dry skin? Try some of this new lotion. It's very good. Okay. And one more and one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest any, anything? He shall try some of these multivitamins. They are excellent. Great. May I have three large bottles, please? Okay. Next. Again. No, aquí estoy. Pero... Ay, Claudia. Está Claudia. ¿no? Okay. Yo veo que hay seis, pero no sé quién es el que falta. Si gusta, eh, practico contigo, Claudia. Sí, empiezo. Ah, ok. Vale. Hi, may I help you? Yes, please. Could have some time for a cough? I think I am getting a cough. Well, I sushed a box of these cold drops. Thank you. And what do you do suggest for dry skin? Try some of this new lotion. This very good. Okay. And one more thing. My husband has no energy these days. Can you suggest anything? He should try some of this Multivitamins, there's excellent. Great. May I have three large bottles, please? Okay, thank you. Energy. Ah, pues ya lo hicimos todo. Miss, ya lo hicimos todo. Okay, did you have some questions for the pronunciation of that is okay with the pronunciation of the words? No, yo estoy bien. No okay. sé, mis compañeros. ¿Alguien tiene dudas con la pronunciación de algunas palabras o todos están bien con las pronunciaciones? I think you are. Just give me uh, some time and then we are going to come back to this main session. Solo voy a revisar el último breakout rooms eh, y luego vamos a regresar a la eh, sesión en la original, la número uno. So, está bien, gracias. You're welcome. Bueno, they're excellent. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, may I have three large bottles, please? 
Okay, guys. Nice to meet you. Vamos. <laughs> okay. Ya nos Seguimos. sacaron. ¿no? Seguimos, no. paramos. Como la cumbia. Okay. No sé cómo. Did you have some troubles with the pronunciation or everything is okay? Teacher, mm. solo multivitamina, es que no, no se me queda. Los multivitamins. Multivitamins. For me, it's all okay. Okay. Now we are going to come back to the main session. So give me some time. We are going to end the breakup rooms and now we are going to continue with the session. So now it's time to come back to the main session. Okay. okay. Thank you. Hi. Nice to meet you and you. <laughs> Fine. Aquí un poco de la oscuridad, pero bien. Ok. <risa> eh, ok, I think that we are here. We are all here. Um, I don't know if someone is missing, but it's time to end all the breakout rooms. Now we are in the main session. So, what was your experience practicing this conversation? How do you feel with this uh, practice? ¿Cómo se sintieron con esta práctica? Excellent. No te repito bastante con los muchachos que me tocaron. That's great, teacher. That's nice. great. Good. Amazing. It's nice. good. That's good. Okay. That's good. Excellent, teacher. That's good. Amazing. This is one of the uh, most important things that we have to do. It's practicing to uh, lost that fear of talking in another language. Esta práctica sirve para que perdamos el miedo a hablar un idioma diferente al nativo y con personas eh, de diferentes lugares y nos va a ayudar a mejorar nuestra pronunciación y nuestra... Eh, we are going to be very confident with the pronunciation our this new language. So, After the practice, after the conversation, after the breakout rooms, now we are going to talk about how to improve our listening skills. Vamos a hablar de cómo mejorar nuestras habilidades auditivas. In this case, we are talking about how to improve our skills in this process of learning a new language. So first, we're going to talk about something general Then we are going to make some list of things that we need to do to improve our listening skill. That is very important because maybe uh, in this process of uh, learning a new language or maybe learning in general, we have this problem that is um, listening carefully for some indications. And now we're going to talk about that and how to do it because it's, it will be helpful for everything that we did in our daily life. Not just for the English learning process, but for the um, all um, things that we did in our life. So, uh, estas, um, estas listas que vamos a hacer de cosas que nos sirven para el el skill eh, de, la, de la audición nos va a servir tanto en la vida diaria como en el proceso de aprendizaje del inglés. So, first, uh, we have some information that we are going to share. The first thing it says, listening skills along with the speaking skills are essential parts of effective communication. Good communication is valued throughout most jobs in various industries. You may need to consider improving your listening skills to fully apply your communication skills in your workplace. And beyond, in this article, this is a part of an article, it says we discuss why listening skills are important and how you can improve them with these 10 steps guide to effective listening. 
something that you have to uh, understand and something that you have to remember is that listening skills and speaking skills are very important and they are an essential part for the process. And in this case, we are talking about job. This is something um, bigger because we are using this uh, learning to apply a job, a better job and better opportunities. Así que tanto la parte de la de listening, que es lo que escuchamos, como la parte que producimos, que es el speaking, son muy importantes a la hora de aprender un nuevo idioma e incluso con nuestro idioma nativo a la hora también de aplicar a un trabajo. Because we are talking about jobs. Then, why are listening skills important? ¿Por qué son importantes? Listening skills are an essential part of a good communication. Es una parte esencial de la buena comunicación. First, we have to listen. Then we have to produce with the sound, with the voice. When you are an attentive listener, uh, when you have or, or pay attention to the, the sound, you can begin to improve relationships, make decisions more effectively, and reach agreements with others quickly. And we have an, another additional reasons why listening skills are important. And we have number one, demonstrate your ability to pay attention to thoughts, behaviors, and feelings of an individual. Number two, increase your power to influence, serve, motivate, or develop people effectively. Number three, enables an organization to operate efficiently with the information they are given that may cause them to adapt to market trends or consumers' needs. Number four, enhance basic human interaction. And number five, builds personal and professional relationships. Estamos hablando de que escuchar, saber escuchar es una parte importante para la comunicación, para las relaciones, pero también nos muestra la habilidad que tenemos nosotros como personas para poner atención a pensamientos, comportamientos y sentimientos. Also, the power of influence, el poder de la influencia. Si ponemos atención, vamos a saber qué venderle a los demás, qué decirle a los demás, qué proyectarle a los demás. Uh, it says also that enhance basic human interaction. Ayuda a mejorar las interacciones humanas. Builds personal and professional relationship. Aprendemos a crear relaciones personales y relaciones eh, profesionales. And we have something about a business because we are a people that we can talk about business. And it says that listening skills are also important to many business roles such as sales, ventas, negotiation, negociaciones, coaching, que es como los entrenamientos, um, mentoring, cuando podemos ser mentores, interviewing, cuando vamos a hacer eh, estas, um, vamos a, a hacer como estas encuestas o vamos a, a entrevistar personas. Marketing research, vamos a hacer investigaciones del mercado. Eh, facilitation, facilitadores en managing, vamos a ser managers. Entonces, esto de um, The listening skills can help us in all of these uh, um, uh, areas in business. Now, the important thing, how to improve your listening skill. This is the important part. And we are going to use the document to um, talk about how to improve your listening skills. Now, we are going to see. I'm going to prepare the document in which we are going to talk about the improvement of the listening skills. So give me some time and I will share the screen with you. How to improve. You're listening skills. Okay, there we are. We're going to have 10 
10 steps to improve our listening skills. So let's begin. That's the topic, how to improve our listening skills. Then it says, it is essential to evaluate your current listening skills to select the areas you can improve in. Here are some steps you may take to help improve your listening skills. It is necessary that we can um, have an evaluation about our uh, listening skills. We can hear some maybe uh, audiobooks to know if we can pay attention to the people that is talking. We can see uh, TV shows, we can see um, uh, programs, we can see some uh, series or cartoons in English and without uh, the, the subtitles, because it is important that we can uh, work without, uh, without a, a skill. We can see a lot of things, hear music or whatever we want to improve our listening skills. And we can make some exercise. Now, in these days, we have a lot of tools that we can use to improve our listening skills. And you can search for help, maybe on some social medias that we can um, uh, find or that we use already. And in those social medias, we can find a specific videos for that skills, maybe for the writing, reading, listening, or speaking skills. So you can have some exercise where you can hear some phrases, then you have to give an answer. Maybe it can help to uh, evaluate how is our listening skill and if we can, uh, understand everything that we can hear or we can find the answers uh, correctly. Then we are going to talk about the list. We have some uh, tools. Number one, let's see. Maintain eye contact with the speaker. So in this case, in the number one, it's when we have this kind of conversation person to person, right? In this kind of conversation, we have to maintain eye contact with the speaker. When, when in this case, we are having a meetings through the screen and it can function, but in this case, it is just to talk about a, in front of that person. Number two, visualize. Visualize what the speaker is saying. Okay, in this one, we have to use the imagination. We have to visualize what the speaker is saying. Um, for example, if we are going to listen um, audiobook, uh, we have to visualize what the speaker is saying telling us. We can visualize the actions, we can visualize um, the, uh, the places that the people is talking about. We have to imagine. It can be kind of hard because we are going to keep our mind working for a lot of things. First, hearing, then understanding, then visualizing. There are a lot of things that we have to do in our minds in these cases, but we have to try it. Apenas llevamos dos. Número uno, mantener el contacto visual con la persona que habla. Esto también nos puede ayudar, ¿verdad? Cuando le vemos la boca y podemos ir eh, tratando de entender qué es lo que está diciendo. Pero no siempre se puede dar porque ahora pues, hacemos la mayoría de cosas a través de una pantalla. Number two. Visualizar qué es lo que está diciendo él, el que habla, ¿verdad? Podemos imaginarnos en las situaciones. Y les decía que es un poco difícil porque tenemos que hacer varias cosas al mismo tiempo. 
escuchar, entender y visualizar o imaginar. Then, number three. Limit judgments. Limit judgment. Vamos a limitar los juicios. But in this case, we are going to talk about more about this number three. So don't worry. Number four, don't interrupt. This is very important. Don't interrupt. When someone is talking, we have to pay attention. Why? Because we need to, to make an idea, a general idea about the topic that that person is talking about. And if we interrupt that person, maybe we can lose the information that we need to understand what that person is saying. Number five, wait for a pause. Wait for a pause to ask questions. So in this case, when someone is talking, we need to wait. When that person keeps in silence for a long time, we can ask some questions that we want to solve. In that case, we can ask questions about the topic that person is talking about, and there are no clear for us, and we need more information to create that mapping or that map in our mind about the topic that person is talking about. Number six, ask clarifying questions. Very important. Ask clarifying. Preguntas para clarificar. Si tenemos dudas de una parte de lo que dijeron, esa es la pregunta que vamos a hacer. Very specific and clarifying questions. Eso nos va a ayudar a completar esos espacios vacíos que tenemos de información. Number, eight, number seven. Empathize with the speaker. Empathize, empathize. Empathize. Oh, this one is the wrong one. Okay. In this case, it's talking about feelings. We can uh, put our mind, or in this case, we can put ourselves in the in the same place of the speaker. Tenemos que empatizar, eh, empatizar, I'm sorry. Tenemos que empatizar con la persona que habla. Tratar de entender los sentimientos que tiene. I can imagine eh, myself in that position. How can I feel? What are the feelings that person is, is eh, again, feeling in this moment? Number eight. Pay attention to non-verbal cues. What is the speaker doing? Is he or she uh, seeing to another place? The person seems to feel or seems to be uh, sad, angry, happy. Uh, the speaker is uh, moving the hands, moving the, the legs. Um, the speaker is, I don't know, a lot of things. We need to pay attention to those um, things because it is important to make a complete um, a map of the information. Number nine, provide the speakers with feedback. Okay, in this case, we're talking about the response. 
provide the speakers with feedback. When we are talking with someone, we need that person uh, make something that let us know that is paying attention. Cuando vamos a proveer de eh, este feedback a la persona que habla es cuando nosotros eh, estamos haciendo esos, esos gestos de uh -huh, yes, oh, ok, ah, ¿qué más? What else? Eso le hace al speaker know that we are paying attention, but when we are like, oh, look, a uh, butterfly, and the speaker is saying a lot of things and we are seeing for the place, looking for the cell phone, um, whatever we are doing in that moment. That is not the feedback. That is not positive feedback and can make the speaker feel bad because it can tend to think that we are not paying attention at all. But it is, if that is the way we pay attention, we have to say to the speaker that we can uh, stay in the same place, that we have to move, we have to do a lot of things to pay attention. That is another uh, topic. Then the last one, number 10, practice listening. Tenemos que practicar. That is the most important of these rules. Practice listening. So we have the 10, um, the 10, how can I say? It is not rules, there are steps to improve our listening skills. But let's see one by one. For the first one, it says, maintain eye contact with the speaker. When you are listening to someone talk, you should avoid looking out of the window, texting or scrolling through your phone or scanning a computer screen, limit any unnecessary distractions, provide the speaker with your undivided attention and make an effort to look at them. This provides them with a non-verbal clue that you are interested in what they are saying which encourage them to continue expressing themselves. Consider that the speaker may not look at you because they might be shy, feel uncertain, or the culture may not use direct eye contact for communication. You should continue to face the speaker even if they do not look at you. In this case, it is talking about the communication that we have in person, tenemos que ver a la persona que habla, tratar de ponerle atención lo más que podamos. It's very difficult when we are um, like, we have to, to, to be in one, two, three, four things at the same time. But in this case, we have to pay attention to the person that is talking. Tenemos que demostrar que le estamos poniendo atención, que estamos interesados en lo que nos dice. Maybe that person can be shy and they are not looking at me, but I have to look at them. Number two, visualize what the speaker is saying. Try to conjure up mental images of what the speaker is talking about while you are listening to help retain information. This may be a literal picture or other concepts that relate to the topic. This will help you to remember keywords and phrases when you listen for long periods. Visualizing what the speaker is saying will also help you not to have to, to prepare for what to say next. If you happen to lose focus, make sure to immediately refocus. This case is very important. When we are speaking with someone, we can create an image or a map of key words. It is not necessary to uh, remember everything with commas and periods and all of that things. We can make maps of a specific information. Vamos a hacer mapas de información específica, palabras clave que podamos utilizar para nuestras respuestas. For example, I am talking to you about, um, let me see, about books. And I'm talking about my favorite books. I really like that book because it talk about adventure, it talk about magic, it talk about a group of people that wants to save the world from a monster, etc. I'm talking about the book. And I really like that book. 
So you have to create an image. Oh, that is the, um, the main word, adventure. So if that person asks me about the, the gender of the book, I can say, oh, it is adventure. Vamos a hacer esas palabras, vamos a tomar palabras claves de lo que la persona dice y crear nuestras respuestas. Porque si nos perdemos tratando de entender todo lo que está diciendo, no vamos a saber qué contestar después. So in this case, keywords, palabras claves. Then, limit judgment. And number three, listen without criticizing the speaker in your mind why they talk. This is very important when we are le uh, learning a new language. No criticar a la persona en nuestra mente cuando habla. Why? Because maybe we can make mistakes when we speak, even in our mother language. Tendemos a cometer errores en inglés, pero también lo hacemos en español. Why? Because we are excited, and because we are um, not feeling in the mood to talk a lot. Or maybe we are like this. We can uh, make some mistake when we speak, but that is not important. The important thing is we can understand what the people is saying. So we have to stop criticizing because we are uh, paying our attention to that uh, mistake. And we don't know anything more about what the people is saying. Even if the message caused you agitation or alarm, trying to avoid thinking about negative or judgmental comments because this compromises your ability to listen. You also want to listen with an open mind and understand that the person is giving you their perspective. You may realize that they make more sense as they continue to talk to you. And you won't know the full story without listening. We have to listen in everything because we need to know what is the information that the person is trying to give us. Then don't interrupt, that is the number four. Everyone speaks and processes information at different rates. If someone is delivering their message slowly, Try to cultivate patience and wait for them to finish before trying to rush them along by guessing the next thing they are going to say or replying before they have finished talking. Interrupting sends the wrong message to the speaker. It may suggest that what you have to say is more important that you don't care about they are saying or that the conversation is a competition. We have different kind of people. People that um, talk very slowly with patience at their time. They are not like talking very fast. Then we have people with medium way to talk, not very fast, not very slow. And then we have a lot of people that talk really, really, really fast. And we have to pay attention to all of them. And maybe we can say, ah, it's very slow. I will get bored and I will not understand because I am almost sleeping. But we have to try to pay attention. It's very important to hear all of that a kind of people. Number five uh, that we have that uh, we have to wait for a pause to ask questions. That is very important. Also, it's and not interrupting the person that is talking. Ask clarifying questions helps to keep the conversation on topic. You only want to ask questions that pertain to your understanding rather than ask a question about something that is not related to the main idea the speaker is trying to get across. When you ask clarifying questions without interrupting, it shows that you are listening, paying attention and willing to discuss things further. Then emphasize with the speaker. Empathy is essential to effective listening. You should mirror the emotions the speaker has. For instance, if their face conveys sadness or joy, then your facial expression and words 
should also convey similar emotions, emphasizing with the speaker takes concentration and expends energy, but it allows for open communication and establishes relationships. Then paying attention to no verbal cues, um, most of the communication that takes place between individuals is non-verbal. You can learn a great deal about someone through their body language and tone of voice. That is very important, the tone of voice that we were talking uh, before. Cuando utilizamos el tono de la voz, this is very important, is in the listening and in the speaking uh, way. When we uh, hear some tone of voice that is very different, we can imagine a lot of things. And if we cannot control the tone of voice, we can, um, the people can understand another thing about the, the, the way we speak. Cuando hablamos tenemos diferentes tonalidades, ya lo decíamos anteriormente, que nos van a ayudar a que las personas nos entiendan mejor, a entender a nosotros a las personas y a saber cómo está esa persona. And for example, if I go to someone and I say, hey, hello, how are you? Maybe you can think, oh, that's, that person is kind, right? It's been uh, polite. But if I go to someone and I say, hey, what's up? With a, a different tone of voice uh, that is very hard or, or high, you can say, hmm, that person is rude. Or maybe I can, I can go and say, <sighs> hello, how are you? You can say, ah, that person is feeling tired, it's sick. But I go, hey, how are you? And like that, and you say, ah, that person is happy. The tone of voice is very important because it provides information. El tono de la voz también nos va a dar información. Nos va a decir, mm, esta persona está hablando de algo triste, está hablando de algo que le molesta, está hablando de algo que le emociona. Y cuando algo nos emociona, tendemos a hablar muy rápido y a veces ni nos entiende. Entonces, todo esto nos va a ayudar a nosotros a entender, ¿verdad? Eh, también nos va a ayudar a meternos en el tema de lo que la persona está hablando. But now it's time to end the session. It's 10 o'clock. Now it's time to go to sleep, maybe. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, Good night teacher. tomorrow. Teacher, I have a question. Tell me. Eh, ¿Cuál sería su recomendación para poder como nivelar el tono de la voz? Porque a mí me suele suceder que de repente siento que llevo como en una misma, en un mismo nivel, en una misma línea toda mi voz. Entonces, de repente, no, pareciera que estoy preguntando aunque no esté preguntando, entonces, ¿qué ejercicio podría recomendar? Oh, in that case, you emphasize the words. Él le pone mucho énfasis, tal vez, al final de la, de la frase. Por eso suena como que está preguntando. Eh, mm -hmm. Something that you can do is make records. Puede grabarse hablando. Por ejemplo, usted ponga diferentes situaciones. Eh, yo quiero decir la misma frase de diferentes formas. Y la graba, las escucha y dice, mm, esta suena alegre, esta suena enojada, esta suena como pregunta. Y se va eh, grabando y luego va preguntando, ¿cómo suena en esta? Y usted, mm, like that. Y vamos haciendo eso. Después le puede pedir a alguien que le ayude. Y usted le, le, hace, le dice una frase X y le dice, ¿cómo te sonó? A pregunta, a reclamo, a algo que te estaba contando. Y eso le va a ayudar a darse cuenta después cuando tiene que cambiar la forma de la voz. Ok, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you, teacher. Ok, see you Good tomorrow. Night. See you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.